y'all. I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com. And today I have a traveler's notebook process video for you. This is my traveler's notebook for the fall. And I'm going to document a couple of these pictures of my kiddos doing virtual school. I have all kinds of fall goodies pulled out a lot from crepe paper, the marigold line over here. And I will put you guys on fast forward. Let's go. I am beginning with a few beautiful papers from the Crate Paper Marigold line. I just love these florals. I feel like it's probably too busy to use as the entire page. So what I'm going to do is cut out a portion of it. And I'm cutting out four inches by eight and a quarter, which is almost the size of a full page. But I'm actually going to divide it between the two pages. So I'll trim this down to eight and a quarter and then I'm actually going to cut that in half and it will sit right in the middle, right in the gutter of the two pages, bringing it together, making it feel like one full spread. I have my adhesive tape glider. I've had a lot of people say that they used to use it, but it was too cumbersome for them. I still love it. It is hard on smaller pieces, which is why I still have my Tombow um, around, but especially in my traveler's notebook, I like this particular adhesive because I feel like it's extra strong. So you can see I'm going to place this right in the gutter, just a little bit of space so that the book can close. And then I have these two pictures of my kids at work in virtual school and they are just adorable. That's my boys, they are twins and they are in the same class and they are sharing um, a computer at that moment because one of their computers was glitching. And so in order to watch their teacher, they just shared one seat and were looking at one computer and I was able to um, grab that picture, super, super sweet. I love so many of the papers from this Marigold line, so I'm going to include several of them on this page. And I'm just going to do some simple matting just to add a little bit more color. I did not change the colors of my pictures to coordinate or anything like that. I just went with what they were and I'm just using beautiful supplies. It doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't have to overthink it and color coordinate every last little bit of your spread. It is nice to do that every now and then. But I'm just wanting to get this story down. I'm wanting to write just how proud I am of my kids and how they've been doing with virtual school. It is not easy. It's not easy on any of us. We do not have easy days for sure, but they have really been troopers and they've shown just a lot of resilience as um, they've gone through this time period. So just want to um, get down that story in my traveler's notebook. So you can see me messing with these frames. These were fussy cut out of another piece of paper and I actually used them on a different layout and there's a few left over here and they're just gonna make the perfect little vignettes on where I can add some stamping later on. And then I am also grabbing this Pink Fresh Studio um, ephemera kit and I'm gonna pull out a couple of the ephemera pieces. I love this one that says details cause that's a perfect opportunity to add some journaling in that area and then I'll go through and pick out just a few more trying to figure out how I want the placement of things I love that floral I don't want to cover it up too much and I loved that card I look at you and see sunshine so a few other small ephemera pieces that I'm gonna mix and match and this is just playing with little details I think that's one of the fun things about travelers notebooks is that you can really focus on those small details because it's a small layout I have pulled out one of my Felicity Jane stamp sets. I am trying really hard to remember to use my stamps more. I have so many beautiful stamps, especially from uh, Felicity Jane actually, that are really great for traveler's notebooks. So trying to remember to pull them out more and I will be able to stamp them on these little frames. So I love this one it says taking one day at a time. And these are just really good quality stamps. They come out very clear. So I need to just remember to grab for them more. So taking one one day at a time. I'll clean that stamp off and then there's another one that is a beautiful script that says today that I'm going to use on a separate piece over here. It does overlap the color, the border of this frame just a little bit, but that's okay. I still think it um, looks nice on that sheet. And then I have another stamp on that same set that says uh, so many changes, which is perfect for the season of life that we are experiencing because there are just so many changes. So this little ephemera piece has a perfect little spot to stamp that phrase in. And now all my stamping is done. 
it is time to start assembling the main elements of my page, getting them on the paper. And it's funny how some placement changes right at the end. You saw that I had it all planned out where I wanted everything, but as I start assembling where things go, it adjusts ever so slightly. You'll have to let me know if you do the same thing because I always plan out where things are gonna go and then it's like at the last second my brain's like nope and just switches it around and it's just how it ends up and it all works out in the end but I just find that interesting that I do spend the time to plan and then when adhesive is on the back something generally makes me change my mind. So shifting things around ever so slightly I have all of these frames some of them are going to be hanging off of the page tucked behind pictures um, I think that gives it an interesting effect when you have pieces coming off the page kind of um, gives you the impression of the layout um, continuing on and when I trim it off I'm able to use this extra little piece down below which I think looks pretty nice down there and fills in some of that white space. Mixing a few of the ephemera pieces in again, I moved the position of them, which um, I thought was, you know, I'm just trying to fill in some of this white space. I'm not the biggest fan of white space. I know we're supposed to embrace it and give our eye a place to rest, but I think there are other ways to give your eye a break besides just having white space. And so that's why I like to fill it with color. I love the beautiful supply, uh, supplies that I have and I just want to use them as much as possible. I was gonna have this card kind of askew or turn to the side a little bit at a diagonal, but I ended up just lining it up. Everything was kind of boxy and that's okay. It happens sometimes. I think the frames break that up just a little bit because they are all curved and I'm just gonna include one more curved frame right here and I moved that details thing to the bottom. This is one of those other examples of, it was definitely higher up. And then I moved it to the bottom just to create a little bit of weight down there and balance. I'll cut off the edge of that frame. And then what I've done is left a small journaling spot um, in that white space where I can just record the thoughts on how virtual school is going. I'm left with that little piece. I always like to use the extra little pieces and having that more solid piece kind of breaks up all of that floral that's in the same place. Because I don't trust my ability to write in a straight line, I am gonna add some journaling lines right here just to make sure that I don't kind of you know, trail off to one side or the other. And then some quick journaling, like I said before, just about how school is going, how proud I am of my kids. It's by no means perfect, and we definitely still have struggles, but they are working really hard and they are adapting really well. Super proud of them. And the last thing I'm gonna do is grab some of these puffy stickers right here that I can add in just to add a little bit of dimension and of course a little bit of shine to my page. I love this big chunky bow. I think it is super cute and I again love the shine that it adds and it fits really nicely under the word sunshine. And then I will add a few of the hearts just to bring that metallic over to the left side of the spread and this layout is done. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I have all of the supplies I use listed down below as well as a link to sign up for my email newsletter that goes out every couple of weeks. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.